Oh, look at that. It's Tank Wars again. And this time with the Hellcat and the Jagd Panzer 4. Let's have a look at two games with those two tanks and see which one you might prefer. Let's start with the game of the Hellcat. It's a tier 6 only game with 3 artillery pieces and on the map Serene Coast. The first thing you obviously have to do with an incredible speedy medium tank or not really a tank destroyer is to go into a position which allows you to shoot in certain and different directions. And this in Serene Coast is obviously in the middle. It allows you to shoot up on the hill where usually some people are camping around but you can also shoot at the island position where some people tend to just cross and push into you. So in general, it's always good to have somebody in the middle which allows you to get some easy early damage. However, one thing you gotta consider is if there is a position where you can hit any position, well, all those positions you are shooting at, they can shoot back. So it is very important to not get spotted. And well, if you're going too aggressive, you will know very soon. Ouch! Minus 432 hit points. But it does look like our little aggressive moves resulted in two kills. Well, at least one for us and the other one for our team and an additional shot of damage onto the KV2. So that's... Well, that was pretty worth it in the end after all, as we now have a pretty decent position anyway. Trying to go even more aggressive results in our last hit point buffer to be gone, thanks to the totally fair and balanced M44 artillery SPG piece. After doing one of the tactical reloads, we decided to go for the HE round and it was the best decision we could have done. Because let's be honest, hitting an asshole for such a massive roll, that is just very nice. And him immediately dying afterwards is another kill assist going on to our name. Meanwhile, let's have a look what the Jack Panzer IV is doing. This tank is quite a bit different compared to the Hellcat. The Hellcat is like speed, speed, speed. Have a good gun, have speed, get into flanking positions. The Jack Jagdpanzer IV is a little bit different in that regard. It's definitely not as fast and it's kind of weird. It doesn't have the best pen. It only has 220 alpha compared to the 240 of the Hellcat, but it makes all up for in amazing camouflage and absurd DPM with the 220 alpha gun. This time around we find ourselves on the mines map against tier 7 opponents. So it's not the best matchmaking but it could be a lot worse like against tier 8 tanks. I'm very glad that this did not happen. Now some people might say in the comment section below Raging, why are you going there? Why don't you snipe? The Jagdpanzer 4 is a sniper tank. You are correct. However, in my thought, I was like, you know what? Maybe I will be able to shoot at people driving up on the hill. And if two people will drive up there, I should be able to get two free shots of damage in, which is always rather nice. Only one went up, but two people decided to push the water side which is kind of interesting because it definitely didn't work out and resulted in me getting 600 combined damage and with them being dead i could use once more the mediocre mobility to get onto the island myself to get some cross shots into the top side of the hill and look at that we are able to try and punish an a43 it looks like the first shot really did connect but the second and the third and the fourth, um, yeah, they didn't want to. It looks like Hans was a little bit drunk. He had too much to by spear. However, he redeemed himself by obliterating the enemy KV-3 because there is a one simple trick about any KV tanks. Shoot underneath the turret and you will hit the fuel tanks. And the fuel tanks have a 45% chance of getting damaged. And if you get lucky and do this twice, 
you usually get a nice and toasty burn. After having finished off the people on the hill, we once more have to put some pressure on the enemy to try and not lose the game. And we get uh, the free kill on the A43 and now have to start moving around again because there are two artillery pieces which are more than happy to try and kill us. But let's just jump really quickly back to the M18 game and let's see if we can close it out. Moving in and surrounding the enemy, we spot an RD piece. And that is very nice that this RD is not camping in the A8 region. In general, attacking this side of Syrian coast can be incredible hard, because some enemies just know how to play those bushes at 8, 7, 8, 8. It's amazing what you can do in there. It even resulted in an epic, decent game with like around 3500 damage in tier 10 in my Kampfpanzer 07RH. But let's be honest, that reloaded HE round on the Hummel really did some work right there. Sadly, 320 alpha wasn't enough to finish him off, because RNG, but I totally take it. More damage to our name. Trying to go around, trying to get some flank going into the enemy's rear, and ooh, that is pretty bad. We got spotted by something we didn't spot, so we have to duck into cover as much as possibly. However, luckily for us, the WZ-131GFT decided to think it's a good idea to push us and we were ready and loaded. After getting a quick shot out, we almost died to the rather poor reverse speed of the Hellcat, something every Hellcat player has to keep in mind while playing it. And trust me, I didn't pay attention to it in the first couple of games after replaying the Hellcat, which resulted in some unnecessary deaths. An epic blind shot of the allied T-34-85M results in us just waiting for the RD to appear again and boom, we finished the game in a victory. Let's jump back to the Jack Panzer IV and see what exactly he is up to. After moving forward a little bit more, we decided to use the amazing camouflage and the binoculars of the Jagdpanzer IV to try and spot the camper TDs of the enemy. And as you can see, it really works out. We get free damage onto the Hellcat. Well, we are pretty decent. Two r shots of damage for free. And a miss on the Super Hellcat. But oh wait, it looks like we hit the sneaky Swedish IKEA box, the IKV-65. And oh boy, what is that? He is pushing in like a madman, resulting in us getting spotted sooner or later. And we have to do some quick thinking right there, loading the HE rounds and dispatching him with the second round. Because we wouldn't be able to kill him with another high roll, or it would be very very close, so we decided to go for the HE, which has 270 alpha compared to the 320 of this Hellcat. And obviously now we have to dodge and weave to not get hit by the enemy artillery. And getting some more spot damage on the Super Hellcat, he gets removed from the game with a blind shot, because again boys, you have such a short reload time on the Jagdpanzer IV that you can very much just spam those rounds. Sadly enough, we are not able to get one more kill on the artillery pieces because they're both camping in the same corner. Unfortunate, however, still a pretty good game. So let's have a look at the post-game stats of those two games, starting with the Jagdpanzer IV. Yeah, 2586 damage and 4 kills is nothing to <coughs> cough at. You know, pretty decent, 550 spot damage, that's a 3k combined game. That was pretty good, we were able to use and abuse its really good camouflage and great DPM. In the Serene Coast game we are at 2700 damage as well as 300 spot, so did you see it? It's also a 3000 combined game. Both games equally as important for third for free marking those tanks. You know, I'm sitting here. This is brilliant. It's an amazing TD. Has decent accuracy, not good armor, very, 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 very weak transmission, meaning that you constantly get your engine broken when you get hit in the front. 
but amazing camouflage with Binus amazing view range, epic DPM and a decent premium round. And if you don't really like DPM and don't really like having not that good standard penetration, you can use a 7.5 centimeter gun, which has less alpha but more pen. So that's good, but I like this more. Like the Hellcat is just a Hellcat. It's fast, it's nimble, has a punchy 240 alpha gun. It's a great tank. It's a tank I generally enjoy. And this is why I'm going to pick this tank. I like this better, simply as it is. It doesn't have the camouflage of the Jack Panzer. It doesn't have the DPM of the Jack Panzer. But everything else just feels much more comfortable for my personal playstyle. But now I gotta ask you. Gotta look in the screen if it actually records or not. Yes, it does. Which tank do you prefer? Do you prefer the Jack Panzer 4 or do you prefer the Hellcat? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you around. <coughs>